Thanks, Blurthen from Walker Scott. And in this series, we'll be covering a wide range of look and feel and navigation within D365 Finance and Operations. In this session, I'll be covering workspaces, menus, and forms. It should be noted that I'm using a standard Microsoft D365 Finance and Operations environment with Microsoft's Contoso demo data. So let's jump right in. First of all, we're going to cover workspaces. Workspaces are available on the default homepage, and depending on your security role, you may see less workspaces. Most workspaces are a collection of activities that would typically be used by a user in their day-to-day -day activities. From these workspaces, you can access a collection of activities. One that we're gonna look at is the general journal processing. So I'm gonna scroll down to general journal processing and click on the general journal processing. From here, you can see that most workspaces contain summary tiles at the top. From here, I could click on the new journal summary tile and that would take me to create a new journal. You can also see some tiles that show different results and counts as well. Clicking on these will take you to those lists. And if there's any filtered criteria on them, we'll apply the filters too. Next, we have our details lists. Now, depending on your workspace, you'll see a collection of lists which show you a list of activity based on some filtered criteria. You can perform actions from some of these lists and by clicking see more, it will take you to that list. If I scroll down a little bit further, we also have quick links. So these quick links can take you to useful information that you may need to either perform some setup or additional links. Now it should be noted that workspaces can be personalized where you can add additional tiles, additional lists, and additional links to workspaces. On top of that, you can actually create your own workspaces. In addition, you can also personalize workspaces so that they have some of these links on the home page when accessing the workspaces. There can be quick links attached and personalized to the workspaces directly from the workspace list. In addition to this, workspaces can be accessed using the workspaces menu item in the navigation pane. We're now going to cover the navigation pane. So on the left hand side, we have what's called the navigation pane. And if I hover over this, you can bring up the navigation pane using Alt F1 on your keyboard. Now I have the consolidated icons list for the navigation pane, but by clicking on the navigation pane, you can see that there is some additional lists here. Now, if I'd like to leave this permanently on, I can pin the navigation pane and no matter where I navigate in the system, whether I click on a workspace or I navigate through the menus, this navigation pane will remain on the left hand side. So we're just going to go through these one by one. First of all, we have modules. So if I expand modules, these are a list of out of the box modules. And if you have any ISV or third party modules installed, you will see these on the list on the left hand side. Now these are alphabetical. So you can see that accounts payable is first. And as I scroll down to the bottom, we have warehouse management at the bottom. Now, depending on your security roles, you will see a smaller subset of these modules. If I click through to a module like accounts receivable, you can see it brings up a wide range of menu items. Now these can be collapsed or expanded by using the collapse all or expand all. And I can also expand them and collapse them individually by left clicking on the nodes. Now a useful feature if you are looking for some menu items is you can use the expand all feature and a browser shortcut of control F for find. And if I type in, for example, customer, 
given that this is the accounts receivable module, you can see that it brings up a lot of results for customer. If I type a little bit more information, such as customer group, you can see that it highlights and finds the customer group menu item there. So that's a useful feature in searching for menu items within Dynamics and within the specific modules. I'm going to collapse that all. And you can also see that workspaces do show up in modules as well. Moving on to workspaces, this will show you a collection of the out of the box workspaces. And these are also listed alphabetically A to Z. Depending on your security role, you will likely see less workspaces. Recent is very straightforward. This shows you a recent list of menu items that you have accessed within D365. And this can be incredibly useful if you're accessing things on a regular basis. The next one then is favorites. So right now I do not have any favorites in my list. Now to add things to your favorites list is relatively straightforward. We can navigate to different modules. So for example, accounts receivable, all customers. And if I hover over this menu, I can see that there is a star. If I left click on the star, I can now add these to my favorites. If I navigate to some additional modules like general journals, I can add these to my favorites and I can keep adding multiple favorites in the list. If I go back to my favorites now, you can see I now have four favorites added. To remove a favorite is also simple. You hover over the star and then you can untick that and they will be removed from your favorites. The home button will take you back to the home screen. So if I navigate to, for example, general journals, I can click on the home button and it will take me back to the default home page. Similarly, if I'm navigating in the system, I can also click on the finance and operations button at the top left hand corner and that will also take me to my default home page. Now, as I want to use Dynamics with a bit more real estate, I can actually unpin the navigation pane and you'll see that I get a little bit more real estate to work with when navigating in Dynamics. The next topic we're gonna to cover are forms. So I'm gonna navigate now to the accounts receivable module. And while that's in my favorites, I'm gonna to navigate to accounts receivable, customers and all customers. Like I said, I could have accessed this directly from my favorites straight to all customers. Now this brings a grid view of all customers and we will be covering this in a separate topic. However, I do want to mention a few items on this particular form. So up the top here, we have what is called the action ribbon. And currently I'm on the customer ribbon of this particular grid for this particular customer. You can toggle between each of the action ribbons and there is also a action search bar which you can perform actions within the action ribbons. What you'll also notice is that there is a new button, delete button and edit button, as well as the back button, which will return to the previous form. With this action ribbon, you'll notice that it currently expanded. I can contract this and have a bit more real estate and you'll see that I just have the headers for the action ribbon. Next then is we have related information or fact boxes. And to see these, I'm actually gonna to need to navigate into a particular record. Now that I have my record open, on the right hand side here, I have a related information button. If I left click on that, you can see that there is additional information and tabs for this particular customer record. Next, we're gonna talk about fast tabs. And what you see here is a collection of fast tabs. 
I can expand and contract these fast tabs by simply left clicking on the fast tab. Alternatively, I can right click on the right hand side of the fast tab and either expand all or collapse all as well. If I click expand all, you'll now see that there are a wide range of fields within these fast tabs that will populate shortly. So as you can see, I have a wide range of fields available on the fast tabs themselves. So as I mentioned, these can be expanded or collapsed all at once, or alternatively, I can collapse them and expand them individually as individual by left clicking on the various fast tabs. What you will also notice is that some of the information is summarized on these particular fast tabs, and this can add additional information through personalizations. You can add additional fields to these fast tabs. Next, we're going to talk about view details within fields. Now, some fields you will notice have a blue link or blue text to them. What that means is that I can navigate through to that particular table. Now, there are a few different ways you can do this. Firstly, you can left click on the field and it will take you to that main table. One thing to note is that it will filter on the record that you selected. As I can see, there is a filter icon above this customer group column. Now there are two ways we can remove that filter and we can talk about filters and we will be talking about filters in a separate session. However, I can remove the filter and you'll see that this shows you the entire list of records for that particular field. Now to navigate back, I simply press the left back button and I'm back on my customer record. I can also right click and click view details and it will take me to that same table again with the filter applied. The second method for removing the filter is if I click on the show filters button, I can reset the filters from the right hand side and to navigate again back to the customer record, I click the close or back button. Now, if you do need additional information about a field, what you can do is right click on the field and hover over form information. What this will give you is the table that that field belongs to. So this particular field is in the cust table and the group is the posting underscore customer group is the field name. Now these are the technical names for both the table and the fields themselves. We're now going to show you some additional fields and buttons that are available from basic navigation. And to do this, I'm going to actually bring up a PowerPoint view of a similar field of a customer master. So as you can see, there are a lot of fields available on this particular customer master. And I'm going to explain what each of the buttons do on this particular form. So from A to Z, and it actually goes past Z, we're going to start off with A. So in this particular screenshot, I have multiple browser tabs open. And this is just an example of a browser tab. For letter B then, we have the URL. And as mentioned in a previous session, this holds a lot of information about which environment you're in, which company you're in, and also which form. Letter C then, we have the search bar. And unlike navigating through modules or workspaces, you can actually navigate to areas of the system through the search bar. Depending on how refined your search is, will depend on the search results. Letter D then is the action, action ribbon, which we discussed a little bit earlier. Letter E then is the action search bar. Letter F is your company and how you can navigate between different companies. 
Letter G is the alerts and notifications, which we'll cover in a separate session. Letter H is settings, where you can access a variety of settings, including your user preferences. Letter I is help and support, and we'll be covering that in a separate session. Letter J is your initials and can be used to log in and out of Dynamics. Letter K is the basic filters, which will show you what filters have been applied. Letter L then is related information, and we showed that earlier in this session. Letter M is open in new window, so some forms can be opened in new windows. Letter N is the refresh form, and this refreshes the page without having to refresh your browser. Letter O is attachments and document handling, and we'll be covering that in a separate session. Letter P is the office export and open in Excel, and we'll be covering that also in a separate session. Letter Q is the power apps, so you can embed power apps within D365 finance and operations. Letter R then is an example of a field and we showed how you can navigate through fields that have hyperlinks and you can also navigate through those fields as well. And you can also find more information about the technical names of those fields. Letter S is fast tabs and you will see many fast tabs through forms throughout D365 finance and operations. Letter T is views. Now by default, most of the views will be the standard view that comes with Microsoft Dynamics. And we will be covering how you can create your own views in a separate session. Letter U then is modules, which we handled through the navigation pane. Letter V is workspaces, which show an A to Z list of workspaces. W is recent. X is your favorites. Y is to navigate home. Z is the back button. AA then is the navigation pane, also known as the hamburger bar. AB is the show or hide list, which I'll cover very shortly. And then lastly is AC, which is the finance and operations button, which will take you back to your default homepage. So before I navigate out of this form, I will just cover the show list page. Now, as you can see, by bringing that up, it brings a list of customer records and I can toggle between these customer records without having to move back to the home screen of the customer grid list and I can toggle between these customers. Now, one thing to note is if you are toggling between customers, it will save the record as you toggle. So if you are making changes to the record, if you change to another customer, then it will save the changes that you've made as you are toggling. So in this session, we've covered a lot. We've covered workspaces, We've covered the navigation pane, we've covered forms, and we've covered basic navigation within the user interface as well. Thank you.